game. Awesome job by these guys. Um, and um, we prepared for this all year. You know, I wasn't preparing those guys for anything less than a championship. Uh, now our role was a little different this year, but at the end of the day, we got to our journey and we enjoyed it. We had a lot of ups and, back, ups and downs. I battled these guys, these guys battled me, but eventually we became a family. We figured it out together. We grew as a team, we matured, we became friends, and then we just wouldn't allow ourselves to lose ball games. And the guys did a great job for me, for the community, for the school. And, and, and this is all about them. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to make this about me. It's what these guys did for me. I'm proud of them, and I'm proud that they, um, I was able to coach those guys. Coach, uh, welcome to that play with I mean, Deontay Johnson. Uh, who's playing the post? Uh, was that play designed for him to finish up with, with Brandon and, and, and Allen? Elmore hitting some, some big, big shots, and, and Brandon being your, your top guy to get to the hoop. Um, Walks to that play, that decision uh, that you made the, to, with Deontay. Yeah, well, it was a favorable matchup for us. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was just about to call the timeout until I saw that matchup, and I'm like, you know, there's no way this guy can stay in front of him. This guy's an All American good player of the year. And that just was the right matchup for us. So if I had called a timeout, I couldn't get anything better. And I just told those guys, flatten down. I was fully confident he was going to come out there with a foul or a basket. Only thing I was concerned with that he didn't go too early. And, um, and he went, you know, with enough time to get the foul, made two, and then he had the great free throw shoot. So I, wasn't, I didn't mind putting the ball in his hands. Um, but then he went right on time, got the foul, should have made the basket, but got the foul, made the two free throws. And then now we go to our bread and butter, which is defense. Um, speaking of defense, you, Bridgman and, and, and Stewart kind of played those wings, but you were pushing them off the wings and pushing them inside. We'll talk about that, you know, my mistake, but talk a little about that strategy. They're, they're really strong when they have all that room from the, from the wing position. Well, we talked about not allowing them to play in space. And we wanted to try to run them into the help, force them into the pick and roll where we can get ultimate help. If they go baseline, our base guys show up early and rotate down. Um, and, and we're just trying to limit those guys' touches. We know they're a hard guard. Um, but you know, my guys are up for the challenge. These guys are up for anything. We don't face guys, um, you know, we don't play US, University of South Carolina. We, we face elite level talent, you know, so, you know, they're prepared to guard whoever they have to guard. But it was a tough match, no doubt about that. Um, and the way they spaced us out, um, you know, gave us a little bit of trouble. But the, the number one thing was we just had to figure out that zone. Um, guard those guys. We can do that. We can guard anybody. You know, I don't care how tough they are. But we just had to figure out that zone. And right about that three to four minute mark, I think we figured it out. I think I put them in the right positions where we um, stopped over on the corner and, and spaced them out a little bit and we were able to um, get some shots out of them. What did you learn from them playing them in the, in the regular season? I believe you lost them in the regular season. Did this game, did you have to feel that this game could come down to the last seconds uh, with them based on playing them and learning from them, learning their style, seeing them play uh, in the regular season? Right. Um, it was tough because we played them real early in the year, um, so we didn't see how good they had became. Um, they act obviously much better than we, we thought, I, than I know that I thought. Um, but what we learned was that we can play with them when we played them. Even though we lost them, we knew we could play them. We had them down to 12 and then the bottom fell out on us. But that's what I learned from that. I know those guys learned from it. But just through the course of the season, the thing that we've learned, the trust, you know, to fly around the ball, to share the ball offensively, to be selfless is the lessons that we learned. And that didn't come from any particular game. That just came from growth, adversity, and success for that matter. Deontay, walk us through that, that, that last uh, play call. Um, what were you thinking when Coach called your number all the way down to the, to, to the free throw shots? Well, um, I got the ball on the out of bounds, but um, out of bounds, and I just like, Big players make big plays in the last seconds, and, and I know Coach, after two minutes more, he moved out the way and just let us make big plays. So I thank God I got the ball. It was my chance to show the team that we we here. And I took the ball to the right, got fouled, and the whole time I'm on the line, like, man, we made it. Because these free throws good. He's cash. So. You got that confidence as your, your number was called, and what does it mean, you know, with you being a senior? Uh, able to hit those shots and 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 win the championship for the team. It means so much because like um man, we've been we've been just trying to get this championship for the longest. Like last year we came short, we lost the fourth battle by one point on rebound. So we had our mindset that we're doing it for each other and we can't let each other down. 
So winning this championship means a lot to me, Andrew, to the guys that been in the system, man, and get, get a ring. So we made it, man, we did it. So, uh, Coach, four players in, in, in double figures. How much of a luxury is it to have players that can show up? I mean, the other night, you had Jordan Smith to open the tournament. You had, you had Brennan and now Andrew uh, comes through and scores big for, you, big for you for the tournament. What's the luxury like having an having, uh, offensive luxury like that? Hey, players are in the ball games. Coaches just prepare them. And I'm just fortunate to coach a, couple, a bunch of guys that all can play. You know, I remember when you come to Brennan, you got to be able to play. And these guys understand, you know, my, my level of excellence is probably different than anybody else's level of excellence. So the way they develop their game, improve their game, to have the ability to get into these types of games and be able to make plays, that's, that's only on them. And that's the choice that they made to, to make sure that they, they develop their skills where they can make these type of plays. But it's a, it's a great luxury when they can't key in on one guy. We got about nine to ten guys that all can play. And my job is to make sure those guys are selfish um, because with all the talent that we have, we can't be a selfish ball club. We got to share the ball and uh, we got to get it done on defense because offense, when you got a, a, a group that's just trying to do their own thing offensively and you got the talent that you have, it's not going to work. And so these guys sacrifice, hey, Deontay Johnson and Brendan Renard are two all conference performers on any other team, play the on any other team. On this team, they made great sacrifices to give us that, to make us deeper, to make us better by coming off the bench and accepting that role. So, I mean, that just tells you a lot about these guys and the character of these guys. It was all about winning. And, Andrew, uh, throughout the tournament, uh, you contributed, but not as much as you did uh, in the championship game. Um, talk a little about your poise through the tournament and then showing up uh, when we counted. Throughout the tournament, I know the first few games I went shooting well, but my teammates and coaches even told me to keep confidence. In this game, I knew I, I had to help help out more when Jordan went down with the eye injury, and then Allen stepped in, but I knew I had to make big plays, make big shots. Thank you for my team just believing me to keep feeding me the ball when I was ready to shoot. What's it like sharing this, this senior moment with, with, with Deontay Lamar and you're right? I mean, he comes up with a big play towards the end, and then you, uh, you lead your team in scoring uh, for the night to contribute like that. Uh, the type of relationship me and Deontay got, I, I knew, I've been in him since, since the younger days. We grew up high school, we played red ball, we didn't play in the park. So me and him got a, a brotherly like relationship. So I know the things he can do and he can't do. When Coach gave him the opportunity to go one on one, I knew he was going to make the best decision to get fired, hit two free throws, to win the game. Brendan, to talk about your, your, your performance, I mean, uh, tournament. Uh, MVP. Um, the other night, I mean, you didn't score big, but I believe you had eight assists, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Eight or seven assists. Just talk about pacing the offense throughout this tournament and that the whole experience leading up to the championship and MVP. Well, <clears throat> well um, yeah, a lot of people was kind of locked in on me after the first two games, and so I was just driving and kicking, driving and kicking, and um, my players, my teammates were making shots, so and peeled my sister, but they was locked in on me about trying, I was trying to get to the basket, and then they step up and I just drop it off, and Deontay, Roberto, Chuck, they all made shot. Uh, every time you drive to the hoop, uh, it seems like in the first half it just, not, just wasn't there. Uh, at what point did you say to yourself, okay, we'll, we'll leave the, the ISO alone and I'll start kicking, kicking the ball out for shots? I think, believe on one, you hit, you, if I'm not mistaken, you hit uh, elbow for one, which was a big three-point three point basket. Well, they all sat back on me, so um, once once they started doing that, I was like, I ain't going to get to the bag, so I got to get and stay in the offense and stay stay poised and get get, uh, get players, make, and, uh, get other players shots. Yeah, but most of that was on me. I didn't put them in the best situation against the 3-2 um, zone to turn the corner, to get, um, to get good looks. And, and, and he don't have that option not to be in attack mode, so he had to continue to attack. So that that's mostly on me. But like I said, down the stretch, I figured out how I could get him freed up, and I figured out how I could get my shooter freed up by putting one in each corner, making him basically essentially go to man, and having that big having to come up to him, and now he can turn the corner, and those guys could have, once they start cheating off him, we got the open shots, and then when they stayed home, he got to the basket and dropped off two bigs. So that's really what it on him. That was just a tactical error on my part early on in the game. Okay, so so with him, even if the hit or miss is. His strategy is to attack the tackle in hopes that it'll open up regardless of if he scores or not. 
Yeah, but offensively, you, he has to be in attack mode for us to be successful. He has to be in attack mode. He don't have that's that's not a decision he can make. He has to be in attack mode. I'll decide if I need to get him out, get him a break, or may do something different. Offensively, Andrew Jordan has to take shots, take and make shots, take and miss shots. Offensively, Deontay Johnson has to be aggressive. We don't talk about shot selection and what shots you should take. We talk about decision making. As long as they're making the right decision and sharing the ball, we don't care. But there's certain things they got to do to make us successful. He can't be passive. He can't pass down the shots. Those guys can't let one 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 coverage guard them. They got to win their one on matchups. And so, like I said, offensively takes care of itself. We win basketball games defensively, and you know. So um, uh, you made the comment that Andrew didn't contribute much in the first game, of, but he didn't contribute offensively, but he stayed in the game because defensively he was locked in and he forced him, you know, he forced him guys into tough shots. We're gonna get offense. I mean, like I said, we got enough talent that we are fortunate enough and if he have a bad two night, we got enough people where, you know, we can, somebody else can carry the load. But that's not gonna happen every night. He's not gonna have, he's been playing this game for a long time. He's gonna have some nights, we know it's gonna come. You know, so they can't, you, Every night ain't gonna be your night, but I don't want my guys to worry about that. But every night gotta be your night defensively. You cannot, it's no excuse, you cannot not defend. Walk us, uh, Roberto went down in the first half. Uh, what, what happened and uh, he got back on the court, whether it was uh, your decision, coach, or his. Take us, take us through that, because it sort of seemed like you lost a step um, mm -hmm. when, when he went down. You want, uh, I'll take you, don't worry about Coach, coach. Okay, yeah, well, I didn't even saw what happened. I just saw him coming up limping, and, you know, my, my mind already racing that, oh, man, he's done for the game. 